Hey, what is up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all. So thanks for hanging out with me today. So welcome, everybody, watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. Today, I am bringing y'all a solo playthrough of PAX Transhumanity, designed by Matt Eklund, developed by Pops. Uh, Phil Eklund, and published by Ion Game Design. Now, I did say at the very beginning, or I showed, I should say, in the video, this is sponsored. Technically, it's not really sponsored by them. Uh, this is just something that I'm doing because people have asked me to do a solo playthrough of Pax Transhumanity. So I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. So that's what we're going to do today. So, like I said, welcome everybody. A uh, big thank you to all the patrons who choose to support the show. Very much appreciated. Without you all, this ain't happening. Uh, speaking of which, if you guys enjoy this show, give it a thumb. Doesn't, I'm not asking too much. Just give it, hit a little button right there. Uh, hit the subscribe and the little bell notification if you would like to subscri subscribe to the channel. Both giving it thumbs as well as subscribing helps the channel, but also helps you guys get notified whenever we go live when you hit that little bell icon. And last but not least, if you do want to support the show, if you think the work that I do here on the channel is worth a buck or two each month, then I certainly would appreciate it. You can go to PledgeHC.com. All right, so Pax Transhumanity. Uh, full disclosure, well, two things. One, I'm not going to teach the whole game. I've already done a very thorough teach of this to begin with, so I'm not going to reteach Pax Transhumanity. I am going to teach the differences with the solo game, and in addition to that, uh, it was pointed out, part of the reason we got started a little bit late today was because of the fact that uh, somebody pointed out the official variant, which kind of makes it a little bit shorter and makes it a little less likely, apparently, that the, uh, that the game will end in a tycoon victory for the bots. So therefore, I'm going to give that a try. It's an official variant. It's in the rule book now. It's in the living rules, I should say. And I'm going to actually walk you through the setup of all of this because I thought that would be interesting for you guys out there. All right, so that said, let's get into it, shall we? Y'all ready? I'm mostly ready. So hopefully you guys are having a good whatever today is. They all run together for me at this point, Tuesday. Hopefully you guys have a good Tuesday. So let's get into it. Pack strains humanity. All right. <clears throat> you guys didn't hear that. We're good. All right, I'm going to take these down for right now. All right, let's get to it, shall we? All right. So first and foremost, we have two bot players, okay? We have the blue bot and the red bot. I am going to be playing the pink player. The game itself is going to play mechanically the same way, except how this is going to work for the, the order of play, I should say, is going to go, I take a turn, one of the bots takes a turn. I take a turn, one of the bots takes a turn. Notice what I didn't say here is that the other bot will take a turn. There's going to be a system in which we're going to determine which of the two bots is going to be taking, uh, taking their turn, okay? Now the theme here, as far as the solo play is concerned, is this is the Exo Global Arena. And as businesses expand into the cloud and space, multinationals become supplanted by exoglobals. In this variant, play as a solo player against automated exoglobal players. Now, there are two ways that we can play this. We could play the easy or the hard. Y'all know I'm going to fail, but at least I'm going to fail against the hard version. The hard version is using two exoglobals and a face down exoglobal deck. The easy is three and a face up exoglobal deck. All right. All right. So how, first off, let's go ahead and talk about setup. The setup is going to be the exact same as it always has been. Okay. So we're going to build the deck here and then we're going to seed everything out here just like normal. However, with the variant, and this I'm actually reading from BGG, you'll notice that there are only five pri uh, price markers out here, okay? 
the three, we're playing a three player game, one and two bots. So therefore the three is removed. In a two player, the two and the four are removed. All right, then we're going to form the draw deck. Now the way it's written is a little bit confusing. And I should point out that uh, Sophia Lechner is the one who came up with the shorter deck, essentially this variant, and Phil included in the living rules. All right, so uh, Anne Marie actually wrote it down, in my opinion, a little bit clearer on this, so that's what we're going to do, all right? So we have the four tipping points and the plurality card. Then we're going to create a draw deck for 33 cards, assuming a three player game. Now, I have shuffled these. You guys are just going to have to take my word for it. Yeah, so 33, one, two, One, two, three. All right. So there. So we have a 33 card deck. Okay. Then we're going to populate the developing world with five cards. The, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the first world with five cards, the developing world in, with five cards, and one for each of these, just like we normally would, except it would be six. So here we go. Uh, Josephson Computers, we have Effective Robotics, we have Vertical Farming, we have Avatar VR, and we have Universal Biometric Database. Okay, then Pragmatic Utopia, then Digital Microfluidic Biochips, that's a mouthful, isn't it? We have surveillance, not to be confused with cooking steaks via sous vide, right? Uh, vertebrain, and we have flywheels. We have pebble fission, and we have nano desalination. All right, so here is the rest of this deck, okay? Add the four tipping points and shuffle the four tipping points into the bottom 12 cards, just like we normally did. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we have these four, and I'm just going to kind of distribute these a little bit to get us started on the shuffling every day. Okay, and then And you guys want to cut? Let's cut. We have that there. This will go on top of the plurality. The other cards will go on top of that. And we now have our draw deck formed. Okay. Then out of that, uh, da, 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 da. right now we need to go ahead and Everybody needs their hidden sphere. So each of these guys get a hidden sphere. So I'm going to deal one, one, and two out of the ones that are out of the play. So this one will go like that. We won't know what that is. This one will go there. We won't know what that is. And then out of mine, looking at what's out here, we will take a look. What are our options? I don't mind this being open information because the bots can't see. All right. All right. Um, so we have yellow, green, and blue. Yellow, green, and blue. So we can't choose space. Uh, for, oh, the top deck or the top card here also will become uh, the patent and it will be the leftmost one. So that will go here as well. Forgot about that. There we go. And we start with globalization. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the green. So I'm going to put this here as a reminder. 
that that is my hidden sphere because there's no reason you guys can't see that either. So this will be at a, at a play that will go into the discard. Then all of these cards will be the Exo Global deck, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these here because they're not going to acquire any cards, all right? Uh, all right, so I, to the best of my knowledge, I believe we are completely set up at this point. So now I'm going to take a turn, then one of them will take a turn, and I will walk through all of the steps of them taking a turn as we go along. It doesn't make sense to go over all of that. Uh, ah, lemon tea. That's delicious. All right, let's, uh, let's bring up the chat and everything else. So there we go. We're all set up. We're ready to rock and roll. Hi, everybody. All right. Hey, Richard. Rocky, Joe, Jonathan, Tony, Elk, Phasing. Awesome. Oh, Phasing players here. I've been. Uh, I've seen some of your uh, videos. You're doing a great job. Keep it up, man. Huh? Um. Oh, right. I have to take a patent. Uh, and I will. Thank you. That is the other thing that I forgot and set up. There we go. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. So I have options on what to do. Uh, as I am want to do, as sad as it may be, I think I will fundraise, which drops these two here, these two here, those go there. Okay, so that's going to be number one. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is through all the possible actions that the game, the bots will take, the bots never research. So if I choose to research, I'm going to need my readers for this. Um, oh, uh, place your bets. You don't get to choose just a bot. Do you choose blue bot, red bot, or yours truly? Over under on Glory to Realms be three and a half, by the way. Um, yeah, they, the game, the bots will not research. That is the one action for sure that they're going to commercialize. They're going to put out uh, companies. They're going to do all sorts of things, but they will not research. Um, I think we'll hire to go and start because let's look out here. There is, there are no surge icons, are there? Huh? Hmm. Hold on. So all work in the developing world is subsidized to begin with, uh, per globalization. Um, mm. So we have a green to begin with. Yeah, you know what? We will. So we're going to pay the three to hire an employee. And the employee will go up and cover up cynicism. All right? So let's see. Uh, nice. Okay, Joshua. Sounds good. All right. So we have blue team and the red bot. Okay. Eh. Nobody's picked me. I don't blame you. I am on a winning streak, though. It's two solo plays I've won. Some may have asterisks. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, Cool. There we go. So that's both of my actions. I went ahead and um, fundraised and then I hired. So here we go for the bot order now. Here we go. Flip. There we go. Now for real. Here we go. Okay. Play your turn as normal. Then one of the Exo Global players takes its turn. Then again, it's your turn. Here we go. So the phasing Exo Global player. The Exo Global player 
for the phase uh, is the color with the fewest cubes in play as syndication heat or future shock. If tied, go in player order. Well, player order is going to be blue, so blue is going to start. Now, should also point out, notice they have no income. They have no money. They can always afford to take their actions. Okay? All right, I appreciate that, Elk. Um... Uh, I took green. Why did I take green? I took green uh, looking at these specific. Um, honestly, it was, it, was, it was pretty simple. There's more potential up here for the green and green here as well for be it problems or, uh, or companies. So that's why I started with that. All right. Oh, did I? Oh, did I? Really? Did I do that? Eight? I did. Oh, hell. My bad. So, that should go there. And then I have seven. There we go. My bad. See, this is why I don't normally do this. Hold on. There. Now I can't reach them. But you guys can still see them. I can't. Because that's why I usually have them way out of reach. So I don't cheat. Accidentally. Thank you. All right. So the blue player is going to be the uh, the first player or the the uh, the phasing player, I should say. All right. So then draw an Exo Global card. So here is going to be the card, and I'm going to put it over here so that you guys can see what the card is. All right. So this is from the draw deck, which is out of play. I should point out. Okay. Then. The next thing is place Exo Global Syndication. Place one Exo Global Player Syndication Cube on a market card that is, has the same discipline pair as the Exo Global card. Orange, orange. What do we have? We start at the bottom of the first world, work our way up, nothing. Oh, we make it here to flywheels. He gets one on the flywheels. And then we stop. Place one. If it were a surge, it would then surge on everything and it will chain surge but it is not. Then perform the Exo Global Impacts. The icons on the Exo Global card have a different effect. So we're now going to do this, okay? So what this says for our game is place a Exo Global player disc on a company as following the normal rules. If there are several options to place it on, you choose where. However, a brash company is always placed on the named barrier. So. Heat rejection, and blue is already off to the races with heat rejection. There we go. All right. Normal game ends, apply, etc., etc. Okay. So then, now that this card is done, we've done everything for their turn, and then done, out of play, discarded. It now becomes my turn again. A moment. Any uncovered black? Yeah. Yes, I am going to stay on target. So now I'm going to go ahead and research out. Uh, Yeah, sorry. Uh, research out Universal Biometric Database. I think. <laughs> um... Yeah, we will. All right, so the steps here. Choose the bottom card, which it'll be this card, obviously, because well, that's where I have the thinker work. Uh, I'm going to have to pay the barrier cost, which is going to be two. So one, two there. 
Oh wait, it's not subsidized. Four, because it's not subsidized. Only the developing world is subsidized. So there's that. I will spend the thinker work. Then, since it doesn't have any cubes on it, I can go ahead and put one or two into patents. And it looks like we're in green. We're definitely going to put one in yellow. I'm sorry, in uh, wrong one. Hold on. Green and blue, I meant. There. So the question, because I'm looking at effective robotics to be able to commercialize that. We could put another in green, and that would give us some flexibility for the pragmatic utopia, which would get us an extra cube, but also it would solve a problem, uh, possibly in green as well. So that it, but it's going to cost a lot to be able to uh, syndicate that. So I don't know if it's worth the extra cube to put it onto green or not. Another option is there on the surveillance rights. Nope, you know what, that's it. I'm just going to do that. So this is going to go out of play. That's discarded, that's one. And number two is the fundraise, all right? What's up, Christos? Okay. So now we then go back to the next player. So uh, the fewest cubes in play. Well, blue has one cube, so red is going to be the phasing player now, okay? So they're going to draw one card and that is going to go here. Oh, we have a lot going on here. All right, so they're going to syndicate orange, orange, if possible. No, and here. Now, they will not syndicate if they've already done so, but it's okay if other players have, and another player has, that's okay. They will go right there, done. No surge icons. And then perform the exoglobal impacts. So here we go. The first one is take global warming. Okay, so they take the problem. All right, let's find global warming. Okay, next is the company. So it's my choice of one to be able to put in space for them. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, radiation. They'll solve radiation. Problem solved there. Okay. Oh, shoot. Refresh the market. Thank you. Euthenics. Okay. A couple of green problems there in a surge, but with it being at the top, the surge doesn't really matter. All right. So the next, uh, next thing. Oh, by the way, the or counts as an and in the, uh, in the solo game as well for the bots. So they're doing everything on this. So the next one are the uh, in industry disruption impacts. These uh, are normal, but I get to choose the color. Uh, I choose orange. Okay, so the normal thing is after choosing the viable discipline, uh, divest all patents in orange, done. And then discard one splay card from the discipline or of that discipline, done, because there are no orange. Okay, then the next one, this, they don't have, uh, uh, any capital or any, any money. So instead, the growth or diffusal growth impact. 
These are the same, whether it's this one or the one with the little lines coming off of it. They work, they functionally work the same for this. This is commercialize a card in the market that is syndicated for the phasing Exo Global player. And we look at uh, the same order of priority as we do for syndication, which I'll cover that here momentarily. No impacts or patents are awarded to the Exo Global player, but if I had any syndication or anything like that, I would go out there and then orient the card with its, less, with its left discipline viable in the splay. Okay, so the order goes, uh, any tipping points would be commercialized. There are none out there. Then it's bottom, up, all the way over. These do not have to be viable. So, we're going to commercialize Avatar VR. They don't get any of these. Okay, they, we are not going to uh, uh, do any of the impacts. Just basically all that means is this is now coming over into the splay like so. And it's the left side. So yellow blue is now viable, which makes Vertebrain viable. Okay. And that is all of those. So that Exo player is done. That card gets discarded. Boom. Hey, hey. Hold on one second. Cheers, Victor. Thank you for the support. Went to pledgehc.com, supported the show. Thanks a lot, Victor. Really appreciate it, man. All right, let's get back to it. All right, back to my turn. Well, the green and blue are now viable for me, as is... So these three cards are all viable to be able to commercialize. And I think we stay on target. So to commercialize, you have to have already syndicated. To syndicate, that's going to cost me two. There, and this will then go out there. There is no... Uh, Heat that I need to cover, we now have syndication. That is one, all right? So number two is, yeah, I'm willing. I'm going to go ahead and commercialize effective robotics. So I'm gonna run through the steps on this. There are three things that you must have to be able to commercialize. Number one, is it syndicated? Yes, I have a cube on it. Number two, is it viable? There are three different ways of viability. Number one is, do you have it in your think tank? Well, obviously no. Number two option is, is it here in the splay? Does it have matching disciplines? If the answer is no, which it is no, so that's two. The third is, do you have matching patents that have it? Ah, I do, so we're good. And remember, they must all come from one of the three. I cannot have one patent and one here, so I couldn't do the green here and the blue there. That's not, has to come all from one. So it's viable, that's number one, or uh, syndicated number one, viability number two, and number three is do you have maker work? And yes, I do, because this employee is on both the thinker and the maker side, so we're good to go on that. So now I have to pay. So it's going to be double the cost because it is not subsidized and it's not coming from a utility, so it's going to be one, two, doubled, which is four. One, two, three, and four. That drops down to there. So I've now paid it. Now this employee gets expended as well. All right. So now we're going to do the impacts. So I'm going to pull this card over and show you guys a little bit up close here. So here are the impacts. The impacts are I cure, I get to put a company out on cynicism and I cure infirmity. And it says, the lack of youth in a rapidly aging population represents a huge underpopulation crisis today. Robotherapists and robo caretakers will fill this gap with programmed emotions that are real, not simulated. All right, so we get to put a company out, catch up with the, the bots. So we have cynicism, awesome. And we have solved that and infirmity. 
which I'll be honest, I don't know what infirmity means. Does anybody out there know what that means? So we have that. All right. So now that we have done both of those impacts, all right, now I place the idea in the splay. Hmm. So I could either do blue, blue, which would change globalization to, that would change it to the cloud. And the cloud, this is what would happen, says research is now cost zero. That's, that's kind of awesome. Um, and computing, blue patents are worth double. Yeah, all right, cool. So that, if I went blue, if I go green, it will stay globalization because they're all different. So blue, blue, there is no blue, blue out here. So that's something to keep in mind. Whereas blue, green gives me the possibility of the surveillance rights. Um, I think I'd go blue-green. I think. Yeah, sorry, it's yellow, yellow-blue. It is, sorry. Um, Oh no, did I do the wrong one? I did. Hold on. That is syndicated for the phasing player. Ah, I did, I screwed that up. Thankfully, it's not a big deal. That card couldn't have been syndicated, or it wasn't syndicated, so it would have been this one. So this one would have been orange-yellow. That's what would have been into the display, thank you. And then those, let me check a moment. No patents are awarded, so there and there. There we go. So it's orange yellow. So that may change now what I choose here. Thank you, thank you. Samuel, appreciate it, good catch. Cause again, it's gotta be syndicated. Doesn't have to be viable, but it's gotta be syndicated. All right, so now looking at this, uh, orange, blue, orange, blue, that's kind of nice. And orange, green is there, also nice. Yeah. I think I like orange, green. Okay, so this will become green. These two patents always comes back to wealth. Shoot, brain cramp. They come back to wealth or capital. Hey, they. Um, whenever you divest. Total brain cramp. I'm double checking. Oh, and yeah, into wealth. We're right. We're good. All right. So green. So I will get a green patent for doing that. And we will stay in globalization. There. That is both of my actions. There we go. All right. Way to go, Peanut Gallery. Good job. Appreciate the, the assistance on that. Uh, so let's see. I syndicated, I commercialized, boom, I'm done. All right. Cool. So next, the which bot? Fewest cubes. They have no cubes out there. So, therefore, player order, blue goes. We get another card. All right. Syndicate, blue, green. That sucks. Okay. No, uh, no surging, so that's done. And the first one is a solution impact. Take the solution, as shown, if it's still available. So 
artificial consciousness. These guys are just hoovering up all this stuff, aren't they? Then uh, they commercialize a card in the market that is syndicated per this. So they commercialize yet another card. There's only one that is syndicated by them. So this will go blue. This will come back. Again, we stay in globalization. And next is discard one of their employees, but for them, they discard a company back to the pool. So that's kind of nice. If they suffer losses, they lose companies instead of employees since they have no employees. So that's good. All right. Uh, the market refreshes during a research action only, Resman. So this is blue. Blue must lose that company. That's good. All right. So that card is now done. It is now my turn. All right. So what is it we're trying to do now at this point? So blue, green, orange, green. I really like this one a lot. I think I don't necessarily want to research. I would like, uh, what I would like to do is uh, to import and then syndicate. But I would like to import this and then syndicate it, but it's really expensive right now. And to syndicate, um, well, actually, hold on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to... I think I'm going to import that. I'm just trying to get my order of operations right. If I import it and then syndicate it, or do I wait one turn? You know what? I think I'm going to wait one turn. I am going to fundraise, so there's nothing in capital, so this Cuban debt does not come up. So instead, all of those will go up to wealth. And then I'm going to actually, as a free action, I'm going to spend $3, and I'm going to hire... Mm, do I want to do it as a free action, though? Oh, wait a minute. I could have... A moment. I could have made that company there. And I will have. And in that case, as the free action, I will hire to that. Then, what do I do for my second turn? I think I'll go, yeah, I will go ahead and, uh, if I fundraise, let me work my way through this. If I fundraise, the next turn I import and then I syndicate, it would have to go here. I import it, syndicate it, and then I can commercialize it the following turn. Yeah, I will. So I will drop that down, that moves up, and all those guys will come up here. It's not sexy, but there we go. Um, Oh, wait, XO. What 
Wait a minute. Discard one. Uh. Hmm. Hold on. So okay, what we're what what chat's talking about right now is the Exo Global recession impact says discard one of your employees to the pool. Oh. Oh, I understand. Okay, so I misunderstood that. So if that's the case, I guess technically that is an employee, so this will come back to the pool. So that would go there. Okay, I see what you're saying. So in that case, one of these guys would go there for the free hire. Okay, I got it. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. All right, fine. Um... See, the reason I don't want to import this yet is in case it comes over here and it's later in the, uh, in the order of things. So I wanted to kind of hide it from them until I know I can syndicate it. So that's why I'm waiting to import that. So that is both my actions done. All right. So which of the two have the fewest cubes? Blue in order. So we go ahead and draw one of their cards there. And we have artificial consciousness, if it's available. And unfortunately, the second one is also available. So there's that. Okay. Then they, uh, they commercialize a card in the, uh, I'm sorry. Woo, back up. Syndicate, blue, blue. Blue, blue. Here. And now they're going to commercialize that per here. All right. So that goes away. Blue blue is now viable. And this cube is now worth one buck for me. Okay. All right. That's it for his actions. My turn. I'm going to stay on target. Now that he's opened that up, I'm going to import this here, and then I'm going to pay zero dollars to go ahead and syndicate that bad boy. Done. There's, again, no heat. This is crazy. All right. Good. All right. Uh, so, fewest cubes. Again, will be blue. Blue takes their turn. Okay. Oh, thank you. Regime change. I'm so glad you guys are here. So, the regime change says, there we go. So researching is free for me. That's awesome. That's going to be really, really good because I need to be able to do that. Uh, and computing pat uh, patents, I mean, blue patents are worth double. So there we go. Okay. Thank you, peanut gallery. All right. I've done my two actions. Blue is taking their turn because blue, ha uh, they have the same amount of cubes out. So in turn order, it goes blue. Digital rights. Interface. That is the last of the problems. Sorry, blue green first. No, 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 no. Syndication does not happen in that case. Double check, make sure I'm not lying to you. No matches. No exo global syndication is placed. Okay, so he gets interface. We don't want to finish it in blue, do we? All right. Done. My turn. Let's go ahead and commercialize this bad boy. All right. So nano desalination. So again, is orange green viable? Orange green is viable right here. So we're good to go there. Uh, I have maker work and it is syndicated. So the cost is going to be those two uh, barriers doubled. So it's going to be four bucks or four money there. So this card is going to be the one that we are going to be, uh, I'll go ahead and bring that over. Okay. So famine or slums, which problem do we want to solve? I think we go famine and we get a cube from the supply. So now, and this will come into wealth from there. 
There we go. And let's go ahead and take uh, Famine. There we go. All right, so now we need to figure out which color we want. Uh, yeah, uh, blue, blue green is already viable because of that. Orange blue is not, and there is orange blue out here. And orange blue here. Yeah, sounds good. And that would make orange green, whereas green green, ooh, hold on. But if I did it the other way, that would give me double green, and double green would be those. Hmm. <whistles> you know what? We're going to go double green. Yeah, we're going to go double green. So it stays in the cloud, the dominant sphere, because there are two thirds of it there. All right. Oh, and that will come. Uh, the importing is free. Yeah. Um, Renee, why, why would you say pay two bucks for import? What am I missing? Okay. Welcome, everybody. All right. Cool. I think we're good. So that is both of my actions now. So we're done. We're going to have to start researching here soon. All right, fewest cubes. It's going to be blue again. We draw. Oh, shoot. Thank you. It was subsidized because it came from a company. Thank you. Wow. You guys are invaluable, legitimately invaluable. All right, so they put out a company, Electrodynamic Tethers, here. So, all right. All right, so uh, on Space Debris. Okay. And orange, orange? No, no, here. They syndicate. And that card will go away. He's done. We're up. As a free action, I will spend $3 and go ahead and hire there. Then I will fundraise for my first action. Hmm. So what I'm thinking now is, do I import this over here? then I would be able to bump it up. Or I could import it. Hmm, no. Hmm. So researching is free, right? Oops. A moment. Okay, so researching is free because we're in the cloud. It would expend the work, but that's it. What if we were to research this out? Uh, 
Ah, but I don't have the, the work. Never mind, I can't. I really don't want to get rid of that card. That's the problem. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, shoot. Thank you. Yes. Should have put heat on with that. Thank you. And I am fairly certain that that should have, the first one won't, but that one will for blue. There we go. Let me make sure. Yeah, we're good. I think that's uh, I think that's correct. All right. Okay. What do we do with our second action? I don't want to research that out. I do want to commercialize that. And it's going to be the first one anyways. Yellow, yellow is not viable. Green, green is. You know what? I'm going to import that there as my second action. Done. All right, so which bot? There are three blue cubes, so red is the active bot. All right, we got some new stuff. So social resilience impact. First off, blue-green. No, 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 no. No syndication. Okay. Okay, so now the social resistance or social resilience impact. Remove the lowermost card, if any, of the sphere with the most companies plus employees counting all players. And if tied, go to the leftmost. And then divest any cubes on that card. So the lowermost card, so taking a look at this, lowermost card in the sphere with the most companies plus employees. That's two. That's two. Lowermost card right here. So we remove this. That sucks. Shouldn't have imported that. Gah. Glory to Rome. There's one. And that's what playing the easy version, I would have seen that coming. So there's that. Then we do it not once, but it's so nice we do it twice. Lowermost card. Two, two. Vertical farming. The two cards I didn't want to go away. Go away. Awesome. Glory to Rome again. I'm not saying that was the worst card I could have seen, but it certainly sucked. And then he gets collective identity. Oh, that was gross. Done. Ah! God, feed the family, Robert. Thank you on the answer on that, by the way. That's frustrating. Okay, well, research is free. Just requires work, right? Well, we got to get some cards out, so let's research. The question is, what do we research? That, since we already have the employee and the work, so let's do it. So we're going to research... Yeah, we're going to research that. Does not need to be uh, syndicated. So I have to pay the work, but the free, because researching is free. Uh, 
Now, the ability on this card says install cubes from any financial level. That's not too terrible, really. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so putting it in the think tank, because it's blue-orange, and blue-orange is not viable out here, it makes that viable. That's actually not too bad. That's kind of kind of sexy. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, put it into our think tank. And here, we'll, we'll go ahead and read this. Josephson uh, Computers says, uh, nope. Uh, superconducting quantum computing uses uh, qubits, qu qubits implemented by the state of small superconducting circuits called Joseph, uh, Josephson junctions. Zeta scale calculations per second are attained. That seems fast. Seems good. So now install cubes from any financial level. Don't mind if I do. Cool. There we go. So that will uh, just hang out right here. Okay. And then we researched here. So now we're going to fill the market. And start at the bottom. Love Eternal. That's a little creepy, not going to lie. Uh, we have New Tropics as opposed to Old Tropics. No, just kidding. Machine Ethics. As an action, discard any think tank with heat icons. Can be a bit aggressive. All right. Direct democracy and organic rad hardness. I feel like that's very uh, Fallout esque. So there we go. All right. Uh, so that was research, right? That was one action. I'm going to. Hire the employee for the free action to go there. And for my second action, hmm. Love Eternal's not too bad, actually. If we were to syndicate that, or we could syndicate machine ethics and it, we could surge up, but that's going to cost us one, two, three cubes for sure. It's a lot of cubes. I think we go ahead and syndicate that for free. And we'll go and take from wealth because our spe uh, spe special ability allows us to do that. Nah, you're fine, Samuel. No big deal. No, that's why I'm basically just keeping this guy up here to keep working. It, it, it makes sense for me there. Um, all right. So that's going to be both my actions. Done. So fewest cubes. It's going to stay red because there are three out here for blue. So let's see what their turn brings us. It is a germline alteration. There we go. So we have a company is coming out, and that could be any company uh, in green of my choosing. So this will be red. Easy there. Um, uh, how about some uh, fatalism? That's what he's going to go ahead and do. Then he's going to come. Oh, sorry. How do I forget the first step every time? Yellow, yellow. So he's going to syndicate that. And then he's going to commercialize it immediately. That's what that action is. So that will go back. Yellow, green is now viable. And we're going to move all of this up a little bit. You know what, you guys, we can just do like that. There we go. Hmm. 
yellow, green. Not out there. Doesn't matter. Okay. My turn. I think we syndicate it. I'm sorry, uh, commercialize it. Is it viable? Blue, green. Blue, green is viable. Now, keep in mind that blue right there is out of, hold on. Whoop, that should have been there. I apologize. Oh, another regime change. Thank you. I'm glad somebody's paying attention. All work in the developing world is subsidized now. So here. Uh, but, and this is subsidized as well. So again, blue-green is viable. This is only viable for blue. This is only viable for red, but thankfully blue-green, we're safe there. So we are viable. I have work and it's, and it's uh, syndicated. So we're gonna commercialize. It only cost us two for the blue-green and we will go one, two there. So the two icons, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. The two icons say I get to solve mental health. Well, I'm, I'm literally in work on that. I am trying to do that in real life. So it makes sense that in game I am also, or at least my own, I'm not trying to solve the world's mental health, just my own. Uh, there's that and we get another cube, awesome. Into wealth, there. And now, that can come out. Do we want, it, well, I guess green makes the most sense because it's not going to be, make any viability because the red is blocking it right here and green is going to be worth extra money. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have one, two, three green. So each of these patents is worth three bucks a piece. That's pretty good. So we commercialize, that's action number one. And action number two actually, I think, oh, and I should spend that work there, okay. Yeah, right, Jonathan, many of us are working on it. I'm just saying, all right. Um, One moment on something. I want to look something up. I actually have to look it up in the rule book. Sorry. Interesting that there are very little heat out there, or very little black icons. Because um, what I'm looking at is the pragmatic utopia. That's not gonna, the, the nuke isn't going to affect us at all. I will lose one of my patents if I were to mess with that, if I were to commercialize it. Um, so I have one more action. Thinking about, I mean, it's, oof. you know what? No, we're just going to, am I? Hold on. So I had that. Yeah, I am. That's going to be my second action. I could pull that back before I do that, and I think I will. I will pull this back into wealth, and then I will go ahead and fundraise for my second action. All right, blue cubes outnumber the red. So that's it. So we go here. What do we have? Another company coming out into the blue onto the thinker side. Uh, red easy here under the thinker side. So I guess, uh, go ahead, adverse jurisdictions. It's only got one left. So two more there, need to be careful. Um, I 
Oh, God. Jesus. Developing world. So hiring is free. And that would have happened when I did that. So I will have done that as a free action as well. Um, in all green or worth double. This is, this is good. All right, done. Thank you, Omer. Uh, and blue-orange for syndication. Blue-orange, no, there. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to I'm going to import this for free and then I will syndicate it and that'll cost me 2 and I will take from wealth to put it there and as an action I may move a green discipline visible in the display to the bottom of the display then check for a regime change so I can move any of the greens down to the bottom if I so desire. Hiring costs zero, but it does cost an action, and that's it. That's both my actions. So red is now up. So yellow, yellow for red. And yellow, yellow will go right there. Then you get, oh, well, game's over. That sucks. Oh, that was quick. The reason the game's over is, remember, he gets to put out companies, and these are ands. So he gets to put out two companies. He puts out one in the yellow, and he'll go ahead and do dark money. And then, oh, he would put out a fifth. Immediately ends in a tycoon victory. Well, well, a tycoon loss. So whoever picked red, congratulations, red wins. Well, there's that. Well, that sucked. But it didn't also, because I'll be honest, all I want at this point now payback. I want to play this again. Now, I'm not going to stream it again, okay, to be clear, but that moves really smooth. So, okay, some thoughts here on the solo. So, I've obviously been playing a ton of solo games lately, as you guys know, um, and I'm getting more and more Comfortable, I think, is a good way to put it, playing solo games, because normally I don't have a whole lot of time to be able to do that. But obviously, with the current situation, that is the case. And for this being a, you know, having bots, oh my god, this is really easy to follow along and really smooth and very low overhead. Um, here, well, one thing that I want to show you guys, actually, I will go ahead, um, give me a second. A moment. I'm going to show you guys. Oops. Really, I am. I promise. Right there. Okay. So these two pieces of paper right here. So this is set up for it. Okay. And then the priority for uh, choosing what for spheres and, and what order to choose things. But that's pretty simple. It's bottom, bottom to top, left to right. Tipping points first, bottom to top, left to right, and then nothing happens. Okay, so after setup, you don't even have to mess with that because that's pretty easy to memorize. And then it's just, here's the sequence of play, and then here are the icons, and here's end game victory. The end. That's, that's it. That is the entire bot system. 
and oh my god, that is as easy as can be. Now, there are, so Omer says, that was weird. Seems like there was very little you can do to stop that. Sure, sometimes the deck is just going to beat you. There's just nothing you, maybe I could have done to have prevented that. Uh, that's going to happen, but for those that, and I did some reading before I streamed this. I did some reading and some folks have said, for the most part, it seems like it pretty much evens out for, on that aspect, like that's not in inordinate proportion of times. And who is it? Phasing player. Oh, what's your name, by the way? I, I forget what it is. So uh, phasing player says, that's the nice thing about solo games is you can just run it back. Like if I wasn't streaming this right now, I could just set this right back up and bust it out again. It's already on the table. Get another hour's play out of it, right? So that's really, really good. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to say, as somebody who can be a little leery about games that have a solo uh, option, especially with bots, I tend to be really apprehensive about those. But oh my God, that's, that's about as ideal as you could get for a bot uh, in games, I think. It super low ro rules overhead. It has a, 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 a easy flow to keep in your head. Granted, there are steps that I consistently forgot. That's, a, that's an Edward issue, not a, not a bot issue. Scott, thank you, that's it. So, but yeah, that, that's about as good as it gets for a bot, I think. Um, oh, sure, and Samuel says uh, he made a uh, tabletop simulator module for, for this that includes solo play. Uh, Samuel, um, hey, you know what, here. Samuel, I'll go and make you a temporary mod real quick so you can link it, because otherwise you can't link. Um, there you go. So, Samuel, you can throw the link in real quick. And, uh, and yeah, absolutely. Josh asks, how's Megafauna Solo? Haven't done it. Can't speak to it. Um, Multi-handed using normal rules and play it as a simulation to observe more than a strategy game. Yeah, I, I could see that as a viable option if that's... It depends what you want out of the game, right? Uh, do you want a simulation? Do you want to, to, to kind of see how the game evolves, kind of? Or is it, do you want to play it as a game? I think there are two different schools. And you, the nice thing about a lot of Phil, and in this case Matt's uh, games, you can kind of play them in a couple different ways in that regards. There you go, Samuel. Cool. There you go. Uh, so, a good purchase for purely solo. I played this exactly one time now, Robert. Let me be clear on that. But would I buy this for this? I could, I could see that being viable, yeah. Heh, <laughs> viability. Um, the reason for that is because the bot rules are so low overhead, like I showed you. And, and that's, I printed those off of the living rules. I did do a little bit of formatting on it just so it fit on three pages. So there wasn't like just a little bit there. Uh, but other than that, I printed this off and that's all I used. And that was, that was perfect. Uh, yeah, it's, is it, Would I be willing, if all I could do is play this solo, would I, is this a game that I would look at? I think so. I think the answer is yes on that. I think that's a fair, fair opinion there. All right. Yeah. And, and relatively cheap. So that's also a, a point in its favor. So there's that. All right. And yeah, Samuel says, I've played it about a dozen times solo. It's good, but multiplayer is better. I would argue that any game that is based on a multiplayer game is going to be better multiplayer unless it was designed as a solo game. I think that I think that's universal. I don't I, I I've never uh, Feast for Odin. There are rare exceptions to that rule. Let's put it that way. Because uh, uh, the more interaction a game has, the better the multiplayer is going to be than solo. 
That said, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I mean, 100% thoroughly enjoyed this, as you guys saw. Even though I, uh, I didn't do well, I was progressing pretty well. I mean, if you look at it, we had three problems solved. I had a company out. We had some stuff over here in my think tank. I was commercializing along. I feel like I was doing okay. I don't know that I had some kind of overarching strategy yet. Uh, I, was, I, I needed to research more. I failed there. I needed to research to be able to get the tipping points out. So that I kind of failed on. And I was doing too much commercializing, I think. But I was thinking to commercialize to be able to get uh, companies out as possible and solve problems to be able to get points and then worry about researching to be able to power through the deck to then be able to commercialize a tipping point and trigger the end of the game. Didn't quite work out that way, but I think big picture, that's what I was trying to do. All right. So there you go. Oh, and Samuel says uh, the Vassal module by Stefano is really good, too, if you prefer Vassal as opposed to Tabletop Simulator. So there you go. All right. Oh, yeah, Mage Knight would definitely be an exception. From what I heard, that's a solo game. But there you go. All right. Awesome. So there you go. Pax Transhumanity. Now, no one's asked, but I will, uh, I'll go ahead and answer this. Um, I'm hoping to have a playthrough of Pax Viking before the end of the Kickstarter. For you guys. I can't promise that because I think the Kickstarter ends in like two weeks. However, if not then, then I feel very confident in saying that I will have a playthrough of Pax Viking before it's released to the public and before it gets to Kickstarter backers. So one of those two things will happen because of our partnership with Ion Game Design. Well, plus I want to do it. <laughs> so there's that. All right, that's a wrap. That's all I got for today. So uh, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, our only evening stream, we're going to have a multiplayer and our, our debut of a multiplayer virtual. Well, not virtual. Virtual multiplayer. But it will be with the actual game. We're doing Golf Mobile in Ohio. So I'm going to be here in the studio running the game and playing and then going to be joined by... Uh, one person that you guys are going to know uh, virtually, uh, which is Martin Fowler. He's going to be joining us. Uh, Dave, who's going to be new on the streams, but a part of our local group. And Ken Hill from Rio Grande Games is going to be joining us as well. So we're going to have a four-player game of Golf Mobile in Ohio tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, this we, we played it last night. Uh, the way we're going to be streaming it worked really, really well. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. If you're into winsome games, check this out tomorrow night. All right. Any High Frontier play news? Um, tabled for right now until I can get Jeff and Joe back over to the house. Um, so that's going to be the, the big thing. I am not going to do that virtually, I don't think, because of the fact that... Uh, it's just too much to manage by myself, so I think that's going to have to wait until the fellas are able to uh, physically come over here. All right? Um, yeah, there you go. All right. That's all I got. Join me tomorrow night. Like, subscribe. So hit the thumbs. Seriously, go hit a thumb real quick, please. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And join the now, oops, sorry, Davis, 809 patrons who help support the show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I certainly, certainly appreciate the support. Um, it makes this possible. So if you think this is worth a buck or two a month, I certainly would appreciate it, guys. Go to pledgehc.com, and I will see you guys tomorrow night, 7 p.m. for the four of us, Gulf Mobile and Ohio. And then, so we got that, and then we have a interview with one of the best crokinole players in the world and who actually creates crokinole boards. So check that out later on this week. Command and Colors Ancients this week, Field Commander Napoleon, and Walking in Burano. It is a chock full week. I will see you all tomorrow night. Take care, everybody. Bye. I think I played well. I didn't play terribly, at least. Forgot a couple, but, but overall, I'm, you know, yeah. There goes the winning streak, though. Yeah. <laughs>